Good. Hi, my name is Stephen Fasorje and I'm a faculty librarian at NUST Library. What I would like to do is take you through the basics of how to use EndNote 21. So uh, let me quickly share my screen. And we will look at EndNote 21. So what is EndNote 21? Um, EndNote 21 is a reference management software. It is not the only one in existence. There are others like uh, Zotero and Mendeley. Um, but we have decided here at NUST to subscribe to EndNote 21. Um, that's because it's a very powerful reference management tool and it's used by a lot of universities around the world. So uh, if we want to be taken seriously as a research university, we need to subscribe to a powerful reference management tool like EndNote 21. Now, what would you use a reference management tool for? If you've got a big project, a big assignment, uh, if you're doing a thesis, you are going to be dealing with a lot of sources. And to try and keep control of them manually can be quite difficult. However, if you're able to use a tool like EndNote, you can create records or upload PDFs into this tool and it will help you to manage it. It will help you to work on them because you can make notes on the PDF full text. And then eventually when you want to start doing your writing, uh, of your assignment or your thesis, then it will be a great help to automatically add uh, in-text citations and your reference list at the end. There is a lot, there are a lot more functions than this, but to, just to get you going, I want to be able to help you to start exploring it on your own. Now, why is, uh, I'm not going to go through all of APA, um, that is a separate lesson. You hopefully, if you're at this stage of using EndNote, you are already familiar with APA citation. But just to recap briefly, NUST uses APA 7th edition uh, citation style. Um, and it's important that it is done correctly. Otherwise, you might be accused of plagiarism. And as you know, this is the worst crime in academia. So to avoid it, please make sure that you do your in-text citations and your references correctly and avoid any issues. And for this purpose, EndNote can be a great boon in helping you as well. All right, where can you get uh, help from uh, the library uh, to, to do things correctly? Well, if you go to the library's website at library.nust.na, you will find that there are three places that you can find uh, help. Uh, so if we go to resources, you will see under resources, there's a drop down menu and you can go down. There's an APA um, full guide. This one charges. If you click on this uh, page, it'll give you information. Um, it's one created by NUS Library. It's a full guide. Um, if you want an electronic copy, it'll cost you 30 bucks. 30 Namibian dollars and the information is there how to get a hold of it and if you want a printed one you've got to pay 16 Namibian dollars at the NUST cashier or transfer it into the NUST account. But all the instructions are here um, to help you but there are also free options so if we go back here we go to resources first thing I want to show you is, is that there is a, a very brief guide that you can download as the PDF, which deals with the most common kinds of sources. So we're talking about things like uh, books, uh, chapters in books, um, journal articles, um, newspaper articles, web items, and audiovisual items. But this is not a complete guide, and you might not be able to find everything you need in this. So in that case, there are other places to look as well. You can go up here to LibGuides. These are guides created internally by the librarians. And here you can find an APA citation and referencing guide to help you. Um, you see the tabs cover all the different kinds of sources that you might be using. Um, this is, so this is a, a free guide that you can use. And then you can also, if you want to, you can go outside of NAST, you can go to the research drop down menu, research quick links. And you can go down here, APA, American Psychological Association. This will take you to the guide of the um, Purdue University's Writing Center, which is well known. Uh, they provide guides on all sorts of styles. You'll see the APA Formatting and Style Guide 7th edition. Click on that. 
and then you'll see different categories. So say for instance you're looking for a way to reference a electronic source, you can click on that. Here in the center it'll show you all the different kinds of possibilities. Is it for instance a web page or a piece of online content? Is it a Wikipedia article? Online scholarly journal articles? All that kind of stuff. So what they do there is you find your category and then they will for instance show you how there is how to construct it. So last name, comma, initials and so forth. You follow that style. They'll give you an example as well. And these then you can compare to your source and use this information to correctly cite your information. This is the manual way and this is fine if you're doing it um, a short assignment because you know 10, 15 references you can do it manually. But when it starts getting a bit longer then you want to start using a tool like uh, EndNote. So let's look at EndNote. Where first of all can you get EndNote? Uh, let me just minimize it. If we go up here to LibGuides Again, you'll see that there is an EndNote uh, guide as well. I'm just going to open it. So this is a handy guide. It'll show you just about everything, and it includes a lot of videos that can help you as well. So say, for instance, you want to know how to uh, access EndNote. There's instructions for how students can access it. Now, students should be able to go to their MyNust login, and there should be a download link for uh, installing the EndNote on your laptop or computer. You'll see this also an installation step-by-step -step guide as well that you can look at, okay? Staff, it's much easier. Staff had EndNote pushed automatically by a central server to their machines. Um, uh, so it should already be on your machine. If it is not there, both for students or staff, contact the IT section, uh, say for instance down here in the library in the IT cafe on level two, and they should be able to help you with installation. All right, but let's go take a look at what EndNote looks like itself once you've installed it and opened it up. Mine has been worked on a bit, so you'll see I've already got uh, uh, documents added on the side here, but this is the working space. So this will show you, for instance, all the different groups that you've got. Here at the very top, you will see there's a sync status. Now, EndNote has a desktop version, which is what we are looking at here, but they also have a cloud version where you can go and register and create. And that means um, when you've got both a cloud uh, version and a desktop version, you can sync the information between them so that you've always got the same references in each. Now, the desktop version is much more powerful, has a lot more, um, a lot more functionality. The cloud one has the less functionality, but um, in an emergency, if you're away from your laptop and you're sitting perhaps in a library on a computer, you are still able to do basic functions like adding uh, references and things like that. But at the end of the day, you, when you're typing your assignment, you're probably going to prefer working with a desktop version. All right, so here you can see you can create groups. For instance, if I back click on my groups here, I can create a group and then you can name it. So I've named them, for instance, four different uh, lecturers that I've helped, but then you can also give them names like uh, departments. So say, for instance, you're working in a specific field like uh, uh, geology, then you might want to create subsets like hydrogeology, cost geology, things like that. You can do that and then you can separate all your sources into different fields. You can further differentiate your sources. If we look here, for instance, at Prof. Krishnamurti's uh, articles, you'll see that there are some tags. There's a red tag, red tag, a blue tag, and down here is a yellow tag. So within your groups, you can further differentiate them by adding tags. These are colored tags. So you see, for instance, if I back click on my tags here, you can say create a tag. You can give it a name and you can choose a color and then you can click create tag. And then you can say, for instance, um, take one like this, writing genocide. We know it's uh, related to genocide. I want to give it a genocide tag. All I do is just drag it up to genocide. Now we see the number changes to two and there is a yellow tag attached to it. And if I click now on genocide, 
I can see all the articles that are tagged related to genocide. And it's the same for those that are related to gender or those that are related to performativity. All right. The center section, if I go back to looking at our references, so I'm just going to click on this group here, we can see all the articles. These include articles that I've found and uploaded, and they can also include books. I will show you how to add them uh, in several different ways to get them uploaded. Okay. Now, uh, what is think? What are some of the things that you can also do here? So, for instance, you've got this article, and you double click on it: hospitality and tourism education. Click there. You'll get a window that pops up on the right, and it says edit. So that will allow you to edit the fields, the metadata for that article. Why is this necessary? Well, sometimes, for instance, with this article, uh, EndNote is able to extract the data very easily and put it into the right fields. So why is it important to have this metadata? Well, later on, when we are generating in-text citations and references in Word, that information comes from this metadata, yeah. And if this is incorrect, it's going to generate incorrect uh, citations and references in your Word document. So please, people, make sure that you have got the correct information in these fields. Otherwise, you're going to have troubles later on. And then if you've uploaded the PDF as well, you are then able to work on the document as well. So you can do things like uh, if you like a certain section over there, you can highlight it. And then you can go here and you can click on the little markup annotation. And then you can do things like you can either highlight it or you can add a little note, a sticky note. And then you can say something like, you can put in a comment and you can say, um, share this with Bob or anything you like. And you close it. And then later on, you can come back to your comment or you can look at your highlights. And this saves it uh, just for you in, in Note. It doesn't affect the article anywhere else, but uh, this is great. Also, if you are, for instance, working with someone, which is something else EndNote can do as well, if you share your group with someone else, then you can work on documents together and then they can see the highlights and the comments that you have made. All right. So do you want to say, if I say yes, and now when I go back to it tomorrow night or something, I can see the changes that I made. All right, so you can do this. Now, what is the eventual purpose of all this that I'm showing you? I'm going to open up a blank Word document. There it is. And I'm going to now start adding. Now, you will see that uh, my Word at the top here has a section, a tab, say it called EndNote 21, all right? And these are the tools that allow me to automatically add uh, things, uh, citations and references into Word. But this doesn't happen automatically. You have to do something. So if we go back to EndNote, you'll go up here to Tools. You'll see their site while you write. That's what it's called. From here, you can add this into your Word, and then those tools become available in Word, all right? So keep that in mind. But it's in the guide as well that we've created. So let's go back to Word. Now, if you've used Mendeley in the past, Mendeley used to add its tools under References. If you've still got Mendeley tools uh, showing here, people uninstall them, get rid of them, because they have... We've noticed that when you've got Mendeley tools and EndNote tools, when you start trying to create uh, references and citations in uh, EndNote, with EndNote, the Mendeley interferes and it corrupts, corrupts it badly. It looks terrible. So if you've used Mendeley in the past, please uninstall it, remove it from Word so that it doesn't affect your EndNote uh, in citations and references. Let's look at these tools. First of all, you can see that the style that I've chosen is APA 7th. If you want to choose a different style, you can select another style. Say, for instance, you're submitting a thesis to UCT, which uses Harvard, then you could change the style to Harvard. But at the moment, it's on APA 7th, which is what we use here at NERST. Okay. Um, and then you will see things like, on the left-hand side, insert citation. So I'm going to click insert citation. 
I'm going to click uh, insert citation again. And it's going to show me the list that I am currently working, that I've got open in uh, EndNote 21. So it's good to have your EndNote open at the same time. And then I go to the source that I am using. So say, for instance, I've been typing a sentence using information from Ivanov. I can highlight Ivanov and I say insert. And there we see it puts in the in-text citation and it automatically adds the uh, reference there. So now after the first one, I can create a heading. I can say references. I can highlight it, bold it, and I can center it. And then thereafter, every time I keep adding a in-text citation, they'll automatically add it to my reference list as well in alphabetical order. So say for instance, I am typing some information and I want to add in an in-text citation. Go to my EndNote 21, insert citation. I pick another one, for instance, like Chandra. Say insert. There it adds the in-text citation automatically and Chandra has been added to my list automatically. And as you can see, this makes life a lot easier and you can carry on doing this as long as you have sources and the need for it. So I'm going to say insert citation again. I'm going to pick another one. Uh, Sean here. I'm going to say insert. And there it's added Sean here and both to my in-text citation and over here to my references. Now, you know that sometimes in-text citations change. For instance, if you are mentioning Sean Hare as part of your narrative, then as part of the sentence that you're writing, then you know the author jumps out of the brackets and just leaves the date in the brackets. So how can I do that? I can highlight it. I can go up here. I can go to edit and manage citations. And I can go here and I can say, for instance, um, tools, I can say, uh, let's see, edit citation, exclude author. I say, okay. Now it's taken the author away. And then you can just type the author's name in front. Or let's just undo that. Let's try something else. Um, edit citation. I can say, uh, exclude year, exclude author and year, a lot of different things. Or I can add page numbers. So let's say default, go back there. And I want to add a page number because I've quoted. So I can say, I found it on page 38. I can say, okay. And there we see it adds page 38 in automatically. All right, play around with that. And very quickly, it becomes second nature to you. Uh, you can uh, adjust your citations. So this is the power of using uh, something, a reference management tool like EndNote. I'm not insisting you use EndNote. It would be nice if you did because we paid a lot of money for it. So um, it would be nice to be able to say to management, look, we've got so many students and staff members using it. We can justify the expense. But if you want to use something like Mendeley or uh, Zotero, which are actually free tools, but they're just not as powerful, I'm not going to force uh, in down your throat. You can use what you like. If you're used to Mendeley, keep going with Mendeley. But if you want to try something new, please try uh, using EndNote 21. Okay, let's go back to looking at EndNote and find out how we can do things like adding references. All right. Um, sorry, let's close here. We go to EndNote. All right. How do I add these into my lists over here? Several different ways. Um, some automatic, some are manual. First one I'm going to show you is if we go to my browser, you will see in the top of my browser, there's a little button, a little purple circle with EN for EndNote in it. This shows that I've added the extension EndNote Click. All right. So uh, most browsers, common browsers, you should be able to go to the extensions and look for EndNote Click. Uh, the Instructions are also here. If you go to the guide, EndNote click. It'll explain how you can install it, and then you've got to create yourself an account. And once it's added to your browser, if, for instance, I do something like going to a journal's website, 
you should be able to see a little bar here on the bottom left it says view pdf en for endnote i can click there it shows me the article from the journal and then if i want to export it to endnote desktop i can do that I click export to endnote desktop there it is completed click double clicked on it and downloads importing it into EndNote. So now if I go and take a look at my EndNote, we will see imported references. One, Harris Christian, Mother Tongue, there it is. Um, the journal's information. And then you can move it to where you need it. So say for instance, I am using this as part of, I'm gonna create a new group. I've created one, I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna say, uh, test group enter and i want to add my new imported reference to there i can just drag it down there and now you see test group has one article in it so i go there and there it is um i can double click on it i can see the full text i can see the edit fields double check always that they are correct and now if i want to add it to word i'm going to go back to my word document or well, it will be available there so then you can add it as well okay so that's how you add it using uh the click now i have to give you a bit of uh, a warning um endnote click is not perfect it worked in this occasion but it won't sometimes it won't show up in certain journal uh, uh, databases so in that case, you'll have to go a bit old school, and then what you should do is download it into a folder, uh, the PDFs into a folder on your hard drive, and then from there you can up upload it into um, uh, EndNote. So let me show you how that you can do that. I've got a lot of folders on my hard drive with articles in them, so I can go to my Documents folder. I can go to where I help people because I help a lot of lecturers find uh, articles. I'm going to pick one, for instance, from uh, Prof. Krishnamurti because she has left us, so I don't think she'll mind. Um, let's see. Where is Prof? There she is. Let's grab one of the folders I did in the past. Oh, that one's empty. Let's go to choose another one. There. So there we found find some articles that I found for her in the past. Now, how do I add these from a hard drive into EndNote? So this is 11th March 2019. I go to EndNote. I go up here to File, and I've got two options. I can either I can import either a file or a whole folder. So file, I can add the articles one by one, or I can hold the whole folder that I created. So I'm going to show you folder. I'm going to say choose. I'm going to go down here to uh, clients. I'm going to go to Prof. Krishnamurti. There she is. I'm going to go down to 11th March 2019. I'm going to say OK. I'm going to say import. And then we just wait. It depends on how many there are, it will determine how long it takes. But now it's busy importing all those articles that I found and saved on my hard drive, the PDFs. Important, they must be PDFs. It doesn't work with any other formats. And there we see it's imported. It's now here under the imported. It's found one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, as we see there. And if I want to move these, I can highlight them all and I can drag them to my appropriate folder. So I can drag them to Prof. Krishnamurti. And we see there's 30 now. If I let go, we've now got 39. So I click there, and now we see all the articles. And the new ones are here at the bottom. They're still highlighted. All right. That's how I've added those articles. Now, there's something I'm going to show you that's a good clue. When you see a nice proper title, the chances are that the uh, there will be good, uh, you see, not always. That's why it's worth checking. We see, for instance, the title here is there, but it's not correct. You'll have to go and fix the title. 
and then you'll have to add in the authors and so forth. Otherwise, this will not make a good citation. But often these ones like this, you see that don't have a proper name. Many of the fields are empty. So how can I, for instance, fix that? I can click on PDF. Um, I can f copy the author's name over there. Copy, go back to edit. And then I can say paste. Oh, wait. This one, you remember when you add authors, you've got to put the author's name, a surname first, and then the first name. So I'm going to say Lloyd, comma, Moya. So I'll say Lloyd, comma, Moya. If there's a second author, all I do is click enter, and I can add a second and a third author often like that. But there isn't, so I'm just going to say that. Then I can go and I can add the proper title, performity and performance. Performative, performative V, and I've forgotten what the rest was. Performance. Yeah, and so you can complete your record till you come to the end. Then you can uh, just the necessary fields that you need for uh, a reference, and then you can say save. It'll save it, and then you get them all right. It'll start improving so that when you add them to your uh, reference list that they are correct all right so very important to do that all right what do i do if i've gotten a book off the shelf it's not a pdf i can't upload it from my hard drive how can i add it well if we go to file and we say is it, is it, is it, is it done for file now let's check edit references Oh, let me just see file. Oh, no, no. Sorry. You go here to where you're working. You go, you see there's a little plus sign on the top right corner there. Add a new reference to the selected group. And it comes up. So now you say, what kind of source is it? Is it a book? Is it a journal article that you found in a magazine? What is it? So we're going to say, for instance, it's a book. And then you can add uh, the details. So I'm going to say, make one up, Smith, comma, Bob. Let's say it was published this year. And let's say it is, he wrote, Bob wrote a book called EndNote for Dummies. And we put in the publisher, say it was Zebra Press. This is, I'm just making this up just for the sake of an example. So once you've added in the necessary metadata, you say save. And then you close. And if we go down here, you see at the bottom highlighted, it says Smith, Bob, EndNote for Dummies. There it is. Of course, there's no PDF, um, unless you can find a PDF copy of the book, but that's generally not allowed by copyright. So uh, you'll just have to uh, live without the PDF, but then you've got the metadata in there. And then when you go and try and add your references, you can add that book as well. Okay, folks, um, it's a lot to absorb. The important th things that you need to remember are how to first get EndNote onto your computer, which we covered. Students will go to their uh, MyNust and find it there, and staff should have it automatically on the computers already. If not, both for students and staff, go and approach IT for help if you can't get it installed. All right. Um, you can create different groups for dividing your uh, different uh, assignments or topics in there, and then you can organize your references in those groups. Um, you can, I showed you how to use click um in that click sorry uh the extension over there you see i've now got this locker um if i double click yeah in that click sit not okay it's an app you can add it uh, an extension uh, most browsers should be able to work with it so go and find it for your browser in your extensions or just go to the in that click website and add it from there um so that once you've got it, let's close this down here. So, uh, 
sorry, let me just minimize. So when you go and look at an article in a database, and this pops up, you can add it from there, and then you can send it to EndNote Click. I also showed you how you can also, in another way, get the PDF for an article, download it onto your hard drive, create a folder, and then how you can import that whole folder into your EndNote. And then I also showed you how you can automatically, uh, by clicking the plus sign, add new ones that aren't PDFs, for instance, books or physical media, uh, other media that aren't PDFs, that you can add them manually. Okay. Um, and then I showed you how you can go to Word and you can add, uh, write a uh, uh, site while you write so that you get the EndNote 21 uh, tab in Word. And then you can use this to insert citations. So let's grab another one. Let's insert. And there it's added to the in-text citation, and it's automatically added Carlisle as well to the list. All right. Those are the basics. If you want to know more, look at the guide. Uh, if you get stuck, contact your librarian, and um, one of them should be able to help you uh, get further. There are tons of training resources for EndNote. EndNote has a whole uh, YouTube video, uh, a channel for, with videos to help you. The guide that I created on uh, um, uh, EndNote has uh, uh, um, uh, loads of videos as well that can help you. Um, once you get used to it, it makes life so much easier. But do it from the beginning. Don't start uh, uh, trying to use EndNote when you're nearly done because then it's too late. When you're starting your assignment, start using it then because then as you're doing your research, you can automatically add your references into EndNote. Okay, folks, that's all I've got now. Uh, as I said, if you've got any further questions, do not hesitate to ask a librarian to help you. Thank you for uh, giving me your time and have a good day.